Shalom, brothers and sisters. And as always, all is steam and barak. In worship and praise goes to our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Thank y'all for holding on tight with your brother, Jedaniah. I am grateful to be still able to put out a few things during my purge. Brothers and sisters, purging out the leaven. All praises and honor goes to Heavenly Father, Yahweh, for that one, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And I thank His only begotten Son, Yahusha, begotten of Himself, for giving Himself as a living sacrifice for our sins and being accepted as a wave offering before the throne room of the Most High in the High Shamayim. Brothers and sisters, thank y'all for tuning in. If you haven't seen part one of this series, or one and a half, or part two and part three, go watch those first before you watch this. It's very important that you do that so you can get a foundation and build upon that foundation as you would your own spiritual house in which our foundation and the cornerstone is Yahusha, whom the Father has appointed in that position and place. So you must accept that foundation spiritually first to build upon any house. Or you're going to be building a house that's going to be torn down without his spiritual rock in place. But anyway, to recap on the series, we've been covering the house of Abraham, the house of Isaac, the house of Jacob, the house of the 12 sons and their children. And we have discovered that Abraham's house was built with servants and handmaids right from the start. Right from the start, his, houses was, his house was built upon. And when the time came, Abraham was given a covenant that the father told him to circumcise himself and his son Ishmael and his servants, male servants in his household. It was the father who did it this way. You have nothing to do or nothing to say about that. At least you want to go against him and fight him. Which I have many brothers and sisters doing already fighting against his way and his will. But it's right there, plain as day, clear for everyone to read and see or, and reject or accept. He Build it Abraham as the head of that household with Sarah and made a covenant with Abraham and the male servants. Therefore, everyone in the household was bonded underneath the covenant. Plain and simple and easy to understand. This is why there is scriptures about the stranger because we always had the stranger amongst us. Start with Abraham's household, work your way to Isaac's. You'll see the same thing happening with him. He never changes the same promises and covenants that was in Abraham's household went to Isaac's household. The same promises and covenant that was in Isaac's household went to Jacob's household. And so on and so forth, all the way down to Moses, all the way up to Hamashiach's uh coming and him fulfilling all the things he needed to fulfill while he was on the earth and dying for his sins so even his household is going to be the same household except for there is a spiritual aspect to his household and a physical flesh aspect which we're going to read brothers and sisters and you're going to see that his household is part spiritual and part physical because there are things that need to be fulfilled still in the flesh by Yahshua. That's right. There are still things that need to be fulfilled in the flesh by Yahshua. And we're going to take a look at a few of those things. Some of you already know this. You know, we have to be brought back into the land. Uh, and we're going to be purged out, have the law, such commands, put our minds and hearts to do them. 
But there's this special group that's going to be caught up and changed. And they're going to judge the 12 tribes of Yasharal. Brothers and sisters. So you're going to, you got this group that died in him. And there's going to be a few that's going to be alive. That's going to be prepared to, to come up to him when he's coming down. And when he set his foot on Mount Zion, there's going to be that special group who cannot be hurt. They, they're going to fight in the spirit with their new spirit bodies and um, they they cannot be destroyed. They can't be hurt. And uh, they're going to be the ones taking the kingdom with Yahusha and setting it up right along with the those who are brought in in the flesh. Uh, brothers and sisters. So let's get right to it. Taking a look at Yahusha's kingdom first. Which is the most highest kingdom, brothers and sisters. All of this is uh, the most highest kingdom. From Abraham's household uh, even to to, to uh, Jacob's household, to Moses and everybody else that was in that household. Uh, you're going to see that, that there is the house of Yahuwah in the scriptures that speak of that as well we're going to read that soon uh or later <laughs> but anyway let's start here in the book of daniel chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 i saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of shamayim and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and esteem and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So Yahusha is going to be the king and high priest to reign and rule over all of Yahshua and over all the earth. We would join him. As you can see, uh, Yahshuaal is going to join him being the kings and priests of the earth in reigning and ruling over it. So let's drop down to verse 18 and let's read that. But the saints, come on, that ain't working out. Okay, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Who is the saints? Yahshua and the 12 tribes. That's his elect, his chosen. Now, does that leave out those who are tied to us, joined unto us? No, it doesn't. They have the position in place, but we have our position in place. Let's drop down to verse 21 through 23 and read that. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Y'all see this dual thing happening between us and even Yahusha getting the kingdom? We are joined. That's our brother. We joined on to him. What he has, we have. What he possesses, we possesses. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the, f the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and barack, I mean, and break it in pieces. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, we see that we know who the fourth kingdom is, right? We know it's Rome. We know it's Europe. They've already formed their European Union. And it's gaining power every year. And when it gets to full strength, you're going to see, a, you know, the end of the American Empire, which is already crumbling. And actually, we've been seeing this beast start growing 10, 20 years ago. But we just haven't paid attention or understood that this this eighth kingdom would be of the seven, right? 
that we didn't understand that. So we're seeing um, this final piece of the puzzle coming to light. And we're seeing the final kingdom grow, which is of the seven. It's the eighth one of the seven. And the final one, which is the European Union, which has formed. And we see China growing to do its wickedness as well in the earth. But they will be dealt with. I mentioned that uh, just to say that, okay, the saints are going to possess their kingdoms. The kingdom that is right risen out. The European Union kingdom, which stretches across it, the whole world. It devoured the whole earth. Y'all understand? Even China has been devoured by them. Don't think that that the um, those the powers that be don't control China. They are controlled. They are part of the beast kingdom, brothers and sisters. So. Uh, let's go forward to Revelations and prove that the saints also be kings and priests of the earth. Okay, this is Revelations. Wait a minute. Here we go. Revelations 5, verse 9 and 10. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Yahweh by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto Yahweh kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, he's, he's been making a nation of priests. And because we were chosen by him and given the position and place that we have, we are also kings. Right along with Yahusha, the appointed king over Yahshua. And we know that he gave us the kingdom just as much as he gave Hamashiach the kingdom. And we shall reign as kings and priests on the earth. Now let's drop down to 7 and read verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and psalms in their hands. So, y'all know those other people that was in the household with us, in Abraham's household, Isaac, Jacob. And the twelve sons and their children after them. All those people that was in those households who follow righteousness. Who changed their ways. These are them. These are the other parts. You know. Of all nations. If you. Remember in part one of Abraham. Abraham. Um, got servants when he went to Hay Hayran. With his father before his father died and he left and he went to Canaan. So when he was in Haran with his dad, he was getting servants then. From Haran, some Shemitic servants. Then he went to Canaan. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Then he went to Egypt and he got more servants. Then he went to the Philistines. And got some more servants from Abimelech. And the father made that covenant with them. And told him to circumcise not only himself. But everyone in the household. Those ones who died in the faith. Died in the truth. Died in obedience. Died in his household. This is them. This is not just the 12 tribes right here, brothers and sisters. Do not be that way. The father was never that way where he left out those others who uh, chose to serve him. So let's put that evil lie to, 
to rest for good, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go forward to Revelations 20. We're going to read 4 through... Um, let me see. 4 through what? 4 through 6. Let's get it real quick. 4 through 6. Where are we at? Okay. Just going to read this portion concerning Hamashiach and his kingdom. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahusha and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and set apart is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Hamashiach. And shall reign with them a thousand years. Now this is talking about those who get resurrected in the first resurrection. This is the ones that's going to get caught up in the air and meet him in the air and come back and sit down on Mount Allah with them and reign and rule over uh, Yasharal. They're going to be judging the 12 tribes of Yasharal. This is that group of those who died before him that's going to be with Hamashiach in their new spiritual bodies. Y'all see that? And the rest... Um, won't be resurrected until after the thousand years and the father has his final judgment. Y'all see that? So this is the part that is spiritual right here, brothers and sisters. Right here. But the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. So the first resurrection now, let me just mention something. Hamashiach was the first fruits, right? And we know after he rose, there was a group that rose with him. And uh, you can read about that in Matthews. But you know what? Let's just go over there real quickly and get it. But there is a group that's going to um, come out of the graves again. Now, they came out of the graves the first time with Hamashek after he rose. As a pre, oh, did I go too far? As a pretext to... Um, The first harvest when he returned, because there's going to be a whole lot of us caught up to him, changed and be with him and, and come out of the graves as well when he returned. But there was a group that came out of the graves with, when he uh, was resurrected. Let's read about that in Matthew 27, 52 through 53. It says here, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept the rose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the set apart city, Jerusalem, and appeared unto many. So those that was there came up with him. But he's coming back for another for the uh, first fruits harvest. There's that was like the sheaf harvest. That takes place after the Passover, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then you got that that sheaf offering that you're supposed to give, according to Leviticus 23. And then after that, you got the first fruits harvest that happens after the seven weeks, the Feast of Weeks. So 
we're approaching a feast of weeks harvest when Hamashiach is going to come grab that harvest. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And that's going to take place, brothers and sisters. Uh, if y'all can understand this, you can go back and read it. Uh, those feast days tell a whole lot what's going to be happening. So he already did the sheaf. He gathered the sheaf after the Passover, after his death. After the Feast of Unleavened Bread, he grabbed all those who was unleavened, who died in him. And he, and he resurrected them with himself as a sheaf. That's that first bit of offering before the great harvest offering, the, the first harvest off, offering. And once that harvest offering happens, uh, which is coming up soon, brothers and sisters, this, the last harvest is the one where the Most High harvest himself during the second death. See this first death. Uh, those who are resurrected and have their new bodies won't have to face the second death or the judgment, the great throne judgment by the Most High. Why? Because you've already been washed clean, cleansed, judged, and everything else. You're, you're pure. You have been changed. You got your new immortal body like the set up our messengers. And for this reason, you can't have children either, brothers and sisters. This is the reason why not all of us are going to be changed when he returns. Because there are Bible prophecies that have to be fulfilled uh, that speak about um, us having children and uh, us being getting old and seeing the children running around in the streets, and joy, you know. Those parts have to be fulfilled as well. So that's why the kingdom would be, kingdom of Hamashiach would be part spiritual and part flesh. But the kingdom of the Most High is all spirit, brothers and sisters. But let's go check out Yahshirah and servants that are grafted in as well in the book of Isaiah. Some of y'all know where I'm going. Isaiah. Uh. Let's see, 14, oops. And again, we're proving that the, what the house of Yah Sharal is, what the house of the Most High is, brothers and sisters. That's the whole purpose of this video series, to prove that the, the whole house, what the whole house is, so that when you see things such as, um, I have only come to for the, Lost sheep of the house of Yashara, you'll know what that is saying exactly. That's like with um when you see uh the house of Jacob, you know it's talking about the whole house. Or you talk, while you you hear the house of David, you know it's talking about King David and all his sons who was given the kingship over Yashara. And only them can be the kings. And when you see the house of Levi, you know that they was the ones to, to be the priest of the temple, to, to work the temple and all the duties of that temple, him and his sons after him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And we know that Yahushua came out of the lineage of King Dawid, and uh, he was the final one chosen of King the house of David to sit on David's throne to rule and reign forever. For he was first, he was before him, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. All right, let's read Isaiah 14, 1 through 3. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Yahshua and set them in their own land and the strangers. Now remember, it's talking about all of Yahshua right here. This is him the father, Yahweh, gathering all of Jacob, gathering all of Yahshua. It's already, he's already talked about all 12 here. And he's going to set all 12, as Bible prophecy said, back in their own land. And he's expounding on this. And the strangers, that's the other people from the other nations, shall be joined with them. Who is the them? The 12 tribes. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. 
And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Yasharal shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So in the first three-part series I covered where we had certain of our servants were joined unto us. Certain of our servants came in by price where we brought them for money some of them came in as captives that we we destroyed their city and took their women and children for our possessions y'all hear what i'm saying so you have these different types of um of strangers that join themselves to us in in one way or another either they joined themselves to us by trading. We traded for them. Or we brought them for money. Or they came in captive. And also some joined themselves to us. Look at Ruth. Did she not continue on with Naomi? When she could have went home like a sister? Yes, you have some strangers from other nations that did join themselves onto us, whether near or far. Brothers and sisters, whether they were near or far, they chose to serve the Most High. It's not like the word has not taken effect from Yasharal outwardly to the other nations. Some of them did see and hear and decided to follow and join themselves unto the most high. And that's why King Solomon had that prayer in first Kings chapter eight to the strange to the father about the strangers, if they were to pray far away and they point to they, they face toward holy Jerusalem, his his city. They face toward his temple and pray to him. Hear them from heaven. That's what he said. And that's the special prayer that he prayed for them. First he prayed for Yashara first and then he prayed for the stranger. So to, to Yashara first and then to the stranger. And you see that time and time again. But you got those that twist the word. And we know that. Let's go to Joel next. Joel chapter 2. This is Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. This is what the father say he's going to do to the whole house of Yashiro like he did in the past. And we've proven that when we've seen Abraham. And the men of his house filled with the mighty power of the Most High to destroy those five kings when he went to get Lot back and get all those possessions back. So not only Abraham was empowered, but his servants was empowered. We saw the same thing happen with all the households, Isaac, Jacob, where not only the men of Yashara was in power, but those who were of our household who joined us in a battle was empowered by the Most High. And again, if you haven't watched the first three-part series, go watch it. And I, I cover those scriptures there. So we're proving what the house of Yahusha is. And it's going to be the same household of the Most High. Let's go to Amos chapter 9. Okay, this is Amos chapter 9, 11 and 12. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, all the nations which are called by my name, saith Yahweh, that doth doeth this. So this 
goes back to Daniel chapter 7, 13 to 14. And we drop down to 18 and read some more below where not only Yahusha is going to possess the kingdom, but the 12 tribes, his elect, will possess the kingdom. And we're going to reign and rule on earth over all the nations as kings and priests appointed by the Most High to do this. That's our position in place. Kings and priests of the earth, brothers and sisters, to reign over your brethren. For we are the Most High's inheritance and they are our inheritance. And I talk about that in part one and a half of the house of Abraham. I got, I got scripture on that on that part so go check that out but anyway we are his inheritance put in a special place a position of the house of Yahuwah and they are our possession put in a special place and position in the house of Yahuwah this is their lot and we have our lot y'all see it and their lot is just as important as our lot Brothers and sisters, everything the Most High has chosen to do is good, and it's a good position and place to be in, whichever lot you fall on in the house of the Most High. It's going to be amazing. But anyway, some of y'all are going to go against this one, but I'm not. Let his will be done. That's all I'm going to say. Now, uh, at the end of all things uh, there may not be one left after the thousand year reign is over you know what I mean when the Most High's final judgment come upon all of Edom but those the remnant at that at this time we're going to possess them some of them we're going to sell to the Sabians okay so let's Learn the order of the Most High, how he's doing his will, and let's not go against him and his, his chosen will, for the other things will happen later on. So y'all be patient. You're looking for, for the complete destruction of Edom. It's going to come, and it's due timing. Not by my time or your time, but the Most High's. But let's move on to... Uh, Let's just take a look at that first harvest again. Let, let me, uh, we went over the sheaf offering. Let's go to Matthew 19. Now we're looking at the first harvest. Matthew 19 to 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? And y'all shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his esteem, you shall you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Yah Sharal. Now do you see when the Son of Man returned and he gathered those who died after he rose, they're going to be sitting on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Yasharal. But wait a minute. Aren't we all going to get caught up and changed and be re... No. Some of you are going to be gathered in the flesh to build that which needs to be rebuilt. It. And you need, you're need you going to have children. You need, you need the... Fulfill the prophets that say that Yahshua will be as the sands of the sea during these thousand years. And you will live to a good old age. Those, those prophecies have to be fulfilled. And besides, when you become as the messengers of the Most High, when you have the same body as them, you, you are neither given in marriage nor do you marry. So you don't have children at that during this stage. During this stage, when you hit the regeneration, if you are, if you make it that far to, to get to the regeneration and be called up and changed or die in Hamashiach and be called up and changed, you won't have children. 
It's in scripture, y'all. There's a two part understanding to this gathering that you have to get. It's a spiritual and a physical one that's happening. And it's always been here before you face. So this group is going to judge the 12 tribes. And everyone that have forsaken houses, our brethren, our sister, and our father, our mother, our wife, our children, our lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So, this is the two parts of his kingdom that I'm talking about. It's the spiritual and the physical. And it's going to have, guess what, Gentiles in it as well with us. Let's get some more witness. Luke 22. We're just getting some more witness to that in Luke chapter 22. We're going to read 25 through 30. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise mastership over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Now, well, let's just continue to read. Well, let me just mention this. We were to be the masters over the Gentiles at like Second Ezra chapter 6 verses 54 to the end says, uh, but the servants became masters over us, brothers and sisters. And we were to be their masters uh, because they was, we was, they was given to us. For an inheritance, we were to reign and rule over our brothers and our sisters of the other nations. We are the firstborn of that house, the Most High's building. They are like the second and thirdborn child. It's like the father left the oldest in charge over his younger brothers and sisters. And we went astray and they rose up in their gentleness and, and destroys, is trying to destroy the house. And of course, the father came home and punished us because he he gave us the the rules of the house and we broke the rules of the house. So, of course, we're going to be punished first. And then he's going to deal with them two old, the two younger brothers and sisters later, the younger ones later. And that's what's happening right now. Just to give you a quick overview of uh, what, what's taking place but they're still your brother your younger brothers and sisters those who join themselves to us now there are those outside of that house that ain't joined on to us and they're doing a wickedness outside but there are some younger brothers and sisters inside of our house that's needing us to come back to our position of place that the father has left us in and rule that house like it's supposed to be ruled you know, you know what I'm saying? And then there's there's going to be that other, a couple of those younger brothers and sisters we got to just kick out too, though. Bundle up, throw them to the curve or throw them over the fence because they're no good. And then they're causing a lot of rick and a lot of havoc in the house. Y'all see what I'm saying? So you got those other ones that's outside of the house, but there's some in the inside the house that's wicked and toe up from the flow up, which they're going to get put out. And, and, and joined on to the other ones outside of that household. So we're going through this process of, of being corrected as the firstborn and being cleansed and purged. And the other two children, uh, the other children is joined on to us as being purged as well so that they can uh, stay in their position and place that the father who left us in charge of the household has put them in. Okay, and he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise mastership over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But you shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. You are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father have appointed unto me. That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. 
and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Yasharal. So he invited those who were with him right then and there, and those who's going to be caught up to them in the regeneration. And we're going to be sitting on thrones, twelve thrones, and judging it, the twelve tribes of Yasharal. But that includes also the serfs and handmaids. They're going to be with us spiritually and physically, brothers and sisters. So, again, I'm reminding y'all, we're proving that the house of Yahweh, by proving the house of Yahusha and the other houses before it. Now, let's go look at some more spiritual aspects of the, of the kingdom. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, and we're going to read 50 through 54. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must be must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on a corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And this is how that scripture was fulfilled when Yahshua rose, and there was a group rose with them as we read in Matthew chapter twenty seven. Uh they was the sheaf, the first fruits, the sheaf offering that takes place after the Passover and, and unleavened bread. There's a sheaf offering before the first fruit, the first fruit gathering. I mean, uh, before the har the first harvest. Sorry about that. So he was the first fruits, and then there is a a major harvest, the first harvest of spring. And then you have the fall f harvest, the last harvest, which is the most highest harvest. Y'all see it? So that group that was raised with him, going to join the first harvest in judging the 12 tribes of Yashara in their new incorruptible bodies. This is, this is, this is how it, it's going down, brothers and sisters. This is the part spiritual kingdom and part flesh kingdom. We're going to get into just a moment, the flesh parts, but one more scripture for the, um, talking about the, um, spiritual part. Let's go to first this, first Thessalonians, see if I can get there. First Thessalonians, some of y'all know where I'm going. Turn your own books if you got them read from them this is first Thessalonians, first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 through 18 for Yahusha himself or you could say Yahweh himself shall descend from Shamayim with a shout with the voice of the ark messenger and with the trump of Yahuwah and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first you hear that then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds now this group here they're being prepared right now as spotless as a bride Th this group that's alive these ones right here they are they already died in him so yeah they are part of the bride they're waiting in paradise you hear what I'm saying so they're going to be joined by this group here that's being prepared right now. And these will be alive and remain. And they shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to, to meet Yahoo, Yahusha in the air. And so shall they ever be with the master, Yahusha. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This lines up with Revelations chapter 14 as well, brothers and sisters. Where it talks about the 144,000. 
they would have gowed. The bride. This is it right here. So, though there's still going to be a physical gathering in uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, 34 through 40 talks about that physical gathering. That's what's going to happen after this. After the final trumpet blow, this group going to be caught up to him. The dead going to rise. Those who alive remain going to be caught up to him and gathered to him. And they're going to come step foot on Mount Olive together. And they're going to gather the elect, the twelve, together. His army is going to be all around him, including those set up our messages from the Most High. It's going to be there coming down to, brothers and sisters, to set up the kingdom of the Most High. Now, brothers and sisters, let's go to Second Esdras. And we're going to read chapter 7, 9 through 11, showing you that the kingdom was given to Yasharal. If now that city, 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 9 through 11. If now that city is given to a man for an inheritance, how will there, the hare receive his inheritance unless he passes through the danger set before him? I said he cannot master, and he said to me, so also is Yahshua's portion, for I made the world. Now hear this. For I, the Most High, made the world for their sake. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, what had been made was judged. He made the world for all the elect ones' sake, for Yahshua's sake, and all the ones before Yahshua. And all the ones joined on to Yahshua. Brothers and sisters. Let's go forward to Wisdom of Solomon. To get some more witness. Okay this is. Wisdom of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. 17 and 17. He appointed a ruler. For every nation. But Yahshua is Yahweh's own. Portion. That's right. We're just proven. That there was a ruler pointed to every other nation. But Yahshuaal is the Most High's own portion. We belong to him. And we are over all the nations, brothers and sisters. But the Most High is over us. He is over us. There's an order to all of this, brothers and sisters. Let's also go to um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3. And we're going to take a look at what Yahusha and the Most High is doing over those who are his that's going to make the kingdom, brothers and sisters. Let's just take a brief look at that. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh, and no torment will ever. Sorry, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter uh, 3, verses 1 through 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be in, uh, thought to be in affliction. And they're going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because Yah tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. That's why you're supposed to give yourself as a living sacrifice to do the work. To do his will. To be in obedience. To show and shine the light of truth to all nations. To all around you. Be a living sacrifice. That's why Mashiach was a living sacrifice. And he turned that cheek. 
so that they can hit that one too. He gave himself up. Look at all the pat the 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 Navaim or the the prophets gave themselves as a living sacrifice. And yes, the most high protected them for a time. But some of them were appointed to be given in death. And they were protected all the way to that point when they gave themselves. Whether whether they live or die, they lived for him. This is what the children of the Most High are going to look like. The elect. No matter what happens, they're going to stay in the spirit of truth and, and live out this truth. Y'all hear what I'm saying? In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. You got to shine when, when someone's arguing with you, when someone's debating, when someone's coming with mess and, and garbage. You got to shine. In, in your time of visitation, in your time when you're tested, when the time of your trials and tribulations, this is what the elect going to look like. This is the stuff they're going to do. They're going to shine forth and they're going to run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples and Yahweh will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth and the faithful will abide with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his elect. And he watches over his set apart ones. This includes the 12 tribes and the Gentiles joined on to us, brothers and sisters. This is an overview of what they're going to look like. Let's go to Jubilees chapter 15. No, sorry. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 18 and 4 first. And brothers and sisters, before I uh, leave off that topic there, there are some parables that you really should go read in Matthews uh, chapter 13. The whole chapter pretty much, basically, 1 through 52. And... Um, Let's see, where are some of the other? Oh, Matthew's, the end of chapter 24, where he starts that parable off, and then it rolls into chapter 25. And uh, there's also the parable, let's see, I don't have that one written down, but the parable of the king and his son, when he gathers the nation's to the wedding of the, of, of the son and the um, the other well the, the ones who were bidden to the wedding didn't go so they went out to the highways and byways to get other people to fill up the wedding that is also what the house of Yasharad is going to look like brothers and sisters so look up that parable as well and you will know who's going into the kingdom and what it's going to be made up of brothers and sisters and I know y'all can bring up other scriptures that matches that as well but let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 8 I mean 18 and 4 and we're taking a look at the kingdom of Yahusha and uh well, let, well let's just read it it says right here behold all souls are mine. That's all of them. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So even though all belong to him because he created all of us, the sinner will die. And those who are just and, uh, and lawful and right will live and see his face, will live in his household, the house of Yah, Yahuwah. But let's go further into um, Jubilees chapter 15. And we're going to read this here. Though all souls are his, brothers and sisters, 
he turned those other nations over to be ruled by these other spirits. But he alone is our ruler over Yasharal. Right here, Jubilee chapter 15, verse 21. But my covenant shall I establish with Isaac, whom Sarah would bear to thee in these days in the next year. And he left off speaking with him. And Yahweh went up from Abraham. And Abraham did according as Yahweh had said unto him. And he took Ishmael his son and all that were born in his house and whom he had brought with his money, every male in his house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin. And on the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and all the men of his house and those born in the house and all those whom he had bought with money from the children of the stranger were circumcised with him. Simple, isn't it? It's right here. It's easy. This law is for all the generations forever. This law is for all the generations forever. And there is no circumcision of the days and no omission of one day out of the eight days. For it is an eternal ordinance ordained and written on the Shamainly tablets or tables. And everyone that is born, the flesh of whose foreskin is not circumcised on the eighth day, but belongeth not to the children of the covenant, which Yahweh made with Abraham, but to the children of destruction. Nor is there moreover any sign of him that is uh, Yahweh's, but he is destined to be destroyed and slain from the earth and to be rooted out of the earth. For he hath broken the covenant of Yahweh or Alua. For all the messengers of the presence and all the messengers of sanctification have been so created from the day of their creation. And before the messengers of the presence and the messengers of sanctification, he have sanctified Yasharal, or set Yasharal apart, that they should be with him and with his messengers, his set apart messengers. And do thou command the children of Yasharal, let them observe the signs of this covenant for the for their generations as an eternal ordinance, and they will not be rooted out of the land. For the commandment is ordained for a covenant that they should observe it forever among all the children of Yasharal. Now let's get read the rest of this for Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau Yahweh did not cause to approach him now though Ishmael was his, was part of the house of uh, Abraham and he did get circumcised but he didn't choose him to work through to be his kings and priests on the earth though he was circumcised and though even Esau was circumcised and was of Jacob, I mean, and was of Isaac, the covenant and the promises passed through Jacob. Though he knew of the Most High, though he was taught the ways, he didn't walk in them. Yahweh did not cause to approach him, and he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them. He knew their heart. He knew what they would do. But he chose Yahshua to be his people and he set them apart and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples and all are his. We read that earlier. All are his children, right? Right here. Behold, all souls are mine. As the souls of the Father, so also the souls of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So all who was outside of this covenant of promise given to Yahshua to be the stewards of this covenant and shine the light into the world so that others may come, those who are outside of it will die, for they will die in their sins without Yahushua in the new covenant. But it says there, and gathered it from amongst all the children of men, for there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all have he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him. He's, he's guarding his word. He's protecting his word because they will stump on it. That's why we are commanded not to cast pearls before swine. Guard the word. The Most High is guarding his word from all the nations. He allowed them to create. Catholicism and 
churchianity and Christianity and all those who pick up our book and use it for their gain. He allowed them to create Islam and, and Judaism to lead them astray from him. But over Yashara, he did not appoint any messenger or spirit for he alone is our ruler, Zion. And he will preserve us and require us at the hand of his messengers and his spirits and at the hand of his all his powers in order that he may preserve us Zion and bless us and that they may be that we may be his and he may be ours Zion from henceforth forever and this is why Yahushua who came of the father this is how we are remarrying him through the Son who is of the Father and the Father of Him. They are one. And the, the Father is given the, His Spirit, putting it to the Son. And we all share in that one Spirit of the Most High. That's why the Scriptures say we are all in all. We all come from of Him. We are all of Him. All is His regardless. It's just some of us going to be with him forever and the other one's going to be with their their father they chose to be with forever in the lake of fire so we are showing you the the significance of the house of Yasharal and it's not just us Zion the twelve sons it's all those joined on to us as well hallelujah so I'm going to have to complete this in part two. We're going to take a look at the physical Yashara. Brief look at that. And then we're going to get into the kingdom of Yahweh in part, uh, shall I say, part four and a half. So join me on this next part, brothers and sisters. Thanks for tuning in. Shalom.